I'm Dr. Randy Martin with the Marcus Heart Valve Center here at Piedmont Atlanta, and I'm thrilled that you're joining us. We've got a really interesting discussion today. I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Venkat Palsani. Venkat is an excellent clinical cardiologist, also a very astute uh, echocardiographer, does a lot of our uh, interventional echoes, but most importantly, he's also well-trained and an expert in CT and MR. So, Venkat, a lot of stuff in the literature recently about prosthetic valve thrombosis. Take us through, you've got some interesting stuff to show us. Thank you, Randy. I, I, I would want to share some cases we have come across recently in our lab, CT and MR lab Good. here. Um, so imaging of prosthetic valve dysfunction, I want to show you a case here of uh, a patient we scanned recently by a prosthetic valve thrombosis. Okay. This is a 70-year-old man who was referred to our lab for redo sternotomy. He had an ABR done in 2011, June of 2011. He had an echo done uh, about a year after that, right. which showed slightly higher gradients. And he had a TE as well shortly after that, which showed but they could not visualize the valve leakage so about, that well. So about a year out, he has a peak of 50 and a mean of 30. So yeah. that's pretty abnormal. But, yeah. but TE couldn't see it. So then he had a follow-up echo done? He had a follow-up echo that was done in 2014. He was okay. having mild symptoms. And his max gradient was 81 and mean gradient Goodness. was 51 and his acceleration time was greater than 100 millisecond. It was called as patient prosthesis mismatch, okay. as read as. Uh, I'm going to share, you, share with you some echo uh, images here. You can see the parasternal long axis with color showing flow acceleration along the LVOT across the valve. And a lot of you, turbulence going across A lot of turbulence there there. across, yeah. yeah. And you can see the uh, continuous wave Doppler from the epical uh, long, long axis view showing uh, high velocity is greater than four, right. mean gradient that's high, and acceleration time that's very prolonged at 128 milliseconds here. So there's a lot of things that look like it might actually be the valve. Valve, yes, yes. And these are the TEE images done shortly after. Not great visualization of the valve leaflets. Correct. You can see the valve struts. You can see the flow acceleration across the valve here and the color Doppler um, across these images. So the CT this is was cool. yeah, yeah. CT was done for evaluation of valve thrombosis, and you can clearly see there is thrombus which doesn't take up contrast, iodinated contrast, in all along the sinuses of the valve here, and uh, there is no calcification. So CT is great for tissue characterization, differentiation between panis, thrombus, and calcification. Here, what you're seeing is thrombus, and these red arrows point towards the thrombus, yeah, basically. And, I mean, that, that's a great point that this isn't leaflet degeneration. This is not calcification. Uh, I mean, those look like big bulk lesions. Yes, yes. Cool. And th this was the explanted valve of this patient. You can see the tips of the valve leaflets are still fine. All the sinuses are filled with thrombus, basically. Organized thrombus. Yeah. Organized thrombus. It's, it's really, really interesting. I mean, and you, the, you know, we've heard a lot about this recently, and, and you were telling me that you've had a chance to look at a recent paper that came out about this. Yeah. Prior to that, I wanted to show you a okay. structural degeneration Good. of bioprosthetic Good. valve. And this is a patient who had basically a high gradient across the aortic valve, a little AI calcification of the leaflets right, here. Right. And you can see the peak velocity of 3.9 with mean gradients of 40, uh, acceleration times that are 108 milliseconds. And this patient came to the CT lab because immediately it was realized there was degeneration of, or right. of the bioprosthetic valve. The question was to assess the leaflets. Here you can see a CT is very good for uh, assessing all the structures of the heart and relationship of the structures, even in presence of met metal in the heart. And this is a real-time image of CINE of the CT where we do a complete retrospective capture showing some calcification, but the still image clearly shows that this calcification is present on the leaflets. CT is not only good for this, you know, if the, this patient with this kind of gradients probably is going to the OR for replacement of valve, you can assess the anatomy of the coronary arteries at the same time, uh, and you can prevent a cath on the patient if it's not necessary. So I didn't mean to get ahead of, ahead of myself, but so this is very different looking on CT than the, than the thrombus on the prior case. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. So, so the CT really shows you that differentiation, it doesn't it? Yes, the, again, the, to make the point, uh, panis, thrombus, or calcification can be differentiated really well. So the anatomic pathology is very well shown. And in this day and age where 
We may be doing valve and valve percutaneous Correct. stuff. This may be a big thing because to know the pathology before we do, and we are never, not going to explain this valves in future probably. Absolutely. So I'm going to share a paper that was recently published in, uh, on bioprosthetic valve thrombosis from Mayo Clinic uh, by Dr. Connolly. And in this, they, they, they had a series of patients from 1997 to 2013. They had 397 patients, out of which 46 of these cases had bioprosthetic valve thrombosis. So these were 397 cases that they removed, they explanted. Explanted okay. valves. And, and you, had, you had 46 of those had bioprosthetic valve, thrombus? This, so that's about 12% of yeah. their explants were bioprosthetic valve thrombosis. Interesting. And it, it's very important to know the literature out there for anticoagulation on this patient is not clear yet. So, um, but there is incidence of bioprosthetic valve thrombosis. And you can see this uh, graph here, the bioprosthetic valve thrombosis, an early phenomenon compared to the structural failure. And usually it's much earlier than the structural failure. You'd wonder, I'd also wonder about AI or, or MR. In other words, I think as an echo person that I'm used to seeing regurgitant lesions as well as stenotic lesions where the thrombus looks like it's going to be predominantly stenotic. stenotic yes. Is that right? Yeah, Did that, they comment on that in the That's paper? what they found on the paper. Okay. Most of the thrombus cases were stenotic and degenerative valves had combination of stenosis and regurgitation. But that's really neat that it's, it shows a time differential. So that's, that's very good. And then you, you said that the, the echo was not quite as accurate as we would like. Yeah, in the 46 patients where bioprosthetic valve thrombosis was present on the explant, right. only two out of the 42 t transthoracic commented on possibility of thrombosis. Interesting. And six out of 45 transesophageals commented on this. It kind of is a very uh, tough to visualize uh, on. And it, may, and it may also be that, you know, I, I think the, the beauty about this paper and what you're sharing with us is that I think a lot of people that look at echoes don't think about early valve thrombosis yes. as a cause of failure. Mm -hmm. That's great. And th this, is an exam they, this is an example of an image they showed in the paper where they show the mitral valve here. Right. They comment on saying basically thrombosis is associated with thickening of the valve, less echogenicity, and usually thrombosis, they say, is on the mitral valve is on the LV side, but in this unique case, they show it, it is on the left atrial side. Okay. While panis growth is present with not significant thickening of the valve, but echogenicity is increased and there is restricted motion of the leaflets uh, in these patients, associated with some MR probably in some cases. And the evaluation and management of suspected prosthetic valve thrombosis currently you know, as soon as you recognize there is a suspicion for thrombosis and your Doppler hemodynamic gradients are high, I would suggest that they need either a, probably I would suggest CT because you, on fluoroscopy you can see the valve leaflet motion of the mechanical valve. Mm -hmm. For a bioprosthetic valve, you're stuck, I think CT can differentiate between really anus, help. calcification, and thrombosis really well. And it's, in it's interesting because most people, again, would I think historically have not thought of uh, bioprosthesis as showing early thrombotic changes or, uh, you know, the first case you showed us was probably within a year. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's really very interesting. Yeah. I'm also going to share some, a couple of cases here of mechanical valve assessment by CT. Okay. And this first case, have, the patient had endocarditis and both aortic and mitral valve were mechanical valves in this patient. And the Doppler gradient was slightly higher on the mitral valve inflow, and well, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, they wanted to assess the mechanical valve motion, and you can see here this was actually a non-contrast acquisition, retrospective acquisition of a 4D images. CT, phenomenal images. showing both the leaflets opening really well without any restriction. I mean, this has, I mean, those are beautiful images because if I looked at that mean gradient, you know, it's like. 13 across there, I'm thinking there's something wrong with the valve, even though the flow looks okay. So yeah. this was probably, there is a little bit of MR, I think I can see, but this was probably flow related, maybe anemia or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Your pictures are just spectacular. So you can get those kind of pictures um, pretty routinely in Pretty people? routinely, and we can get on patients as long as their heart rates are about 70 to 80 and their sinus rhythm. All we do is capture a retrospective capture, and we get very good images, full right. RR interval capture. It's phenomenal. And I'll show you an example of another case here 
of a patient who has a mechanical aortic valve Correct. with high gradients, Vmax of 4.3 meters per second, mean gradients that are very high of 46. And the TEE was done, but the visualization of the valve leaf, uh, mechanical valve was not that well. A CT uh, similarly was done. You can see one of the mechanical valve uh, is not moving. One is of the not disc, is not, the, moving, of the disc yeah. is not it's, moving, it's, basically. And, it's and I'm not stuck. defending echo here by any means, because that's, that's really definitive, but you could see a very abnormal flow pattern. Yes there that would make you think that there's something going on, but that's just spectacular. Yeah, so. Definitely. Echo Doppler, once you have hemodynamic gradients and color Doppler showing uh, pathology, I think for the anatomic pathology, CT can yeah, be corroborated. Unequivocally. No, yeah. no, I, and I'm not, I'm, I'm just saying you've really educated me about this, about, so, so, in the, so if, we, if we have a tissue prosthesis and you have some high gradients and there's a question of PPM versus early thrombosis now, which people people should get a CT in those patients, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. I That's, think it, it is of a lot of value. And and what's interesting to me is that you've um, really have shown me with the, even in mechanical uh, prostheses, that CT plays a role in seeing disc motion and things like that. Could you see thrombus and panis on a disc, or do you have too much shadowing for CT? Uh, we should be able to see. In okay. some, if it's very small, they may not be able to see, but if the outgrowth is further away from the disc, we should be able to see. So this, these are great cases, and you clearly show us the progression of our abilities to appropriately diagnose the patient's problem with uh, advanced imaging like this. Yes. So that's, that's really and this good. This changes the diagnostic thinking and therapeutic efficacy oh, of our imaging, I think. Absolutely. No, I think it's, yeah, no, I don't think there's any doubt that the the, the beauty of CT here that you've shown in prosthetic valves is really very useful. So thanks for educating me and educating our audience. Hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have and we hope you will return. Thank you so much. Thanks, Randy.